every Sunday. A story of a man called Moses is told. The story has been told and retold. Over many years, people have found their own meanings and interpretations. Across the world, many communities and people have a story. A story of suffering, a story of slavery, and a story of escape from slavery. Every community has its own story. This story has been passed on from one generation to another. Some have written down the story. Some stories have become an inspiration to writing religious literature. These religious stories are held dear to most people, and by those who don't belong to that community. One of the most interesting Exodus stories is that of Amer. The Amer were seen to have been enslaved by the Red People. They served as slaves for centuries. Through their leaders and their God, they found a way out of slavery and moved to the present land. Exodus stories and traditions from many communities are fantastic fables that combines both truth and fiction. Generally, the story recounts that the Meru were once enslaved by the Red People. They eventually escaped and in the Exodus came across a large body of water called Mboa or Mboa. They crossed the water by magical means. The details of the tradition are replete with parallels of the Old Testament and also contains references to events that describe the New Testament. This has led many to speculate that the Meru people are perhaps the descendant of one of the lost tribes of Israel, or they were once Jews, or they had been in profound cultural contact with people that certainly were Jewish. However, however Meru and Jewish have nothing in common and they share no tradition, either in terms of traditional beliefs or in their creation story. According to the story, the Amer once lived in a state of slavery, far away from the present homeland, and a people called Antobatunde, or the Red People. The king of the Red People was powerful and very harsh upon his subject. But no one knows for sure who the Red People actually were, until today, many people still speculate who the Red People were, and it has been agreed that the Red People were the Arabs. If we take red to refer to skin color, then these people were most likely Arabs, for the Europeans had not yet arrived in East Africa. During this time, Europeans had not arrived in East Africa, and the traditions and beliefs had not yet arrived in Kenya or East Africa. The place where the Amer were enslaved has also not yet been fully located. Some say that it was called Mboa. Others suggest that it may have been Mboa Ramatsanga, which is on the western peninsula of Manda Island in the Lam Archipelago, which is off the northern east coast of Kenya. Others still say that they may have been Yemen or in some other parts of the Red Sea. These harsh and tough conditions of enslavement lasted until the leader of the Red People started killing all the male male children immediately after the birth. But one child, who was very handsome, escaped his fate. He was kept on the riverside in a basket that his mother had made. As a result, the prodigal son became known as Muide or the Eden One. Muide, who is now famously known as Komenjue, grew up to become one of the greatest prophets Meru has ever seen. And he was known as one who had spoken directly to God. He was assisted by another elder who was called Kauro Bechao. Muide organized a council of elders to lead Meru people out of slavery. They went to the leader of the Red People and asked to be set free. The leader agreed, but on condition that an impossible task be successfully performed by the Meru people. According to the story, the first task they were required to produce a shoe that had air on both sides. Her shoes were normally made from leather. This took a lot of thinking until when Komenjue told the people to cut the dual up of a bull before it was completely severed. It was stitched on the sign that has been cut. By the time the bull recovered, the lab had been the shoe that was required. But when they took it to their masters, it was rejected as the Meru people were given a second task that had to be completed. The second task was soon to be very impossible to accomplish 
They were supposed to provide a steer that produced diatomite, a very fine chalk. But Komenjue, using his wisdom and knowledge, advised his people to feed a calf on milk, and eventually they started passing out with dung. However, the successful completion of the task was also rejected by the red people, and they were given a done task to perform. According to the story, the done task, they were supposed to remove a fruit from a very deep pit. They were supposed to do it without piercing it or having anyone descend to the pit to pick it up. Komenjue advised them to fill the pit with water until it overflowed. The fruit eventually floated out. Though it succeeded, the test was also rejected by the red people. The next test required them to kill all the elders until the blood flowed like runoff during rains. However, Komenjue advised that the elders be eaten and all livestock. Cows, goats, sheep, and donkeys be killed in that place. When that was done, the blood was enough to flow as the red people wanted. But the test was also rejected. The fifth test was truly impossible. It required the mere people to find a spear that could touch both the sky and the earth. The mare started making it straight away, but it kept breaking. Kome and Jue and the elders, failing to come up with a solution, they simply abandoned the old plan to make the spear. Instead, they conceived a new idea for organizing people to escape on foot. For this reason, the Meru later on called the spear Itumore Mueto, for it was the impossibility of making the spear that brought the idea of the Exodus. From the field test, the exodus begins. To make escape possible, Komenjue went to ask red people to give them eight days to complete the task. He said the Meru were making charcoal from people's hair because it was a type of charcoal that was required to make the spear. The red people granted him his request. Komenjue organized the first group of old people because they could not walk fast. They were grouped together with all livestock that are made. The squad group was made up of mothers and children, and that group consisted of young people and young livestock. Keeping the rear were the warriors, well armed and ready for battle. The three groups were according to some stories and the versions of the story. The ancestors, the three main male clans from which all other clans of male people descend. The exodus took place at night. Warriors collected a very big heap of dry dung and animals droppings and set it on fire with all their houses. Well, Komenjue had gone to explain to the masters that the fire they were seeing was being used to make the spear, which would be ready by noon the following day. After that, he returned to his people. The following day, the red people waited for the spear, but it was never brought because the male people had gone. Now, the journey to the promised land begins. However, during the exodus, the mayor reached a very large body of water, which they called Mboa. Here, they suffered, because it was impossible to close the water. A sacrifice had to be made to seek answers from God. Modurui offered his brother a sacrifice, but luckily he did not die, and was called Mororua. Following the answer from God, Komenjue struck the water with his magic spear, and it parted. Some flown to one side, the rest to the other side, forming a wide corridor of dry land in the middle, along which the people went across. The crossing of the water lasted the whole night, and it took place in the form of several groups, or on Chienu. When the last group encrossed, Komenjue struck the water again, and it came again to one mass, drowning the army of the rent people who and followed them. So it is that the Meru say they came from Boa. When the Meru got to the other side of water early in the morning, just before sunrise, when the sky was reddish, and this group saw the water they had crossed looking red, they called it Hediaitune, 
the Red Sea. Until today, people have not come to a conclusion on which Red Sea America crossed. However, it is agreed that it is the Mand Island because the Red People were the East African coastal Arabs. Still, many other people argue that the Red Sea that the Mer people crossed is the Tana River. The river is seen to flood and fill during the rainy seasons. Also, understanding that back in the days there were less human activities, the Batana was massive. The Mer people migrated from Boa and settled to various parts of the Mount Kenya ranges. 